and that this is a MOOC cast for week five of the Edu MOOC. Uh, and for those who don't know what that is, it's this massive open online course uh, that we're all kind of participating in, but more generally, we're just kind of a bunch of ed tech people uh, who are interested in how uh, learning happens online. And uh, who are who's here? Uh, this is Jeff Lebo. I'm in Pusan, Korea. This is John Graves. I'm in Auckland, New Zealand. Okay, um, I'm one <laughs> over in the window here. <laughs> anyway, this is Vance Stevens. I'm in uh, Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates right now. And Rob Darrow, um, this week in Lake Tahoe, California. Oh, nice. Where in the world really is Rob? Nice. He gets around yeah, a little week vacation, by week. A little vacation week, but I didn't want to miss our morning gathering. <laughs> we appreciate you getting up early. And uh, everyone is welcome. These are very informal, uh, where you just hang out and talk about whatever we want to talk about. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this a public hangout. So for people in the chat room, if you want to visit, go to my Google Plus room that I'm putting in the chat room. In just a moment, I will make this public so that uh, the world can join in. Yeah, I was explaining to the last, we just finished a hangout uh, with somebody else, and I was explaining to uh, that group that there were inevitably 2,300, 990 disappointed people who would be trying to get it into this room, you know, so uh, apparently some of them haven't shown up yet, but <laughs> act now while supplies last. Well, well, you never know. It could be a rush, you know, you better get in here. This, this, by the way, is not beer. This is iced tea. Oh, I'm glad you clarified that. Mm -hmm. Is that what they call it in uh, Australia? In New Zealand, or where are you Zealand, talking to John? Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> got, got your countries mixed up, John. Sorry. Yeah, well, I'm I'm really an American, so I can't speak for the Kiwis, but yeah, we've got iced tea down here. But we, you know, they they actually drink hot tea on every possible occasion. Uh, it's it's a very British kind of society. Yeah, uh, so, uh, but. Uh, I'm curious kind of about a, collaboration. Are we going to actually uh, uh, see any kind of uh, teamwork uh, arising out of this MOOC uh, uh, endeavor, or is it really all just uh, uh, the the folks in Illinois kind of broadcasting to us? I haven't well, really been tuning mind. into the broadcast all that much. I mean, um, I mean, my my interactions are. You guys, I mean, I've actually Rob and and John, I've met uh, here, and I've also been um, following John's work quite a bit because of the the poplets and the wiki to speech. I'm quite interested in that. I don't. Uh, one thing I, I haven't really gone back into wiki to speech far enough back, but is that something that we can access as well? Matt, just tell us a little bit about that. It's really nice. Oh, absolutely. The, it's an open source software development project. So uh, the uh, the tools, as they are created, are all posted online. Uh, so if you know if you've got a macro Windows system and you want it to to go from your um, you know PowerPoint or uh, open office presentation software into a uh, a wiki to speech uh, presentation with all those you know. Computer-generated voiceovers. I, I could hear him already. Is there? So, hello. Hello, Frank. I can't see you guys yet. We're materializing. We're rezzing. Uh, and for those who don't know what John is talking about, it's a wiki to speech project that he's involved with, where yeah. you take a bunch of text and turn it into very <sighs> listenable audio. Uh, and I'll find that link and toss it into the chat room. Now, John, is this something that you download to your computer, or is there some kind of online service that you can use for this as well? Uh, I've been working on uh, a email to speech capability. So yeah, you wouldn't even have to uh, uh, do anything other than write the words that you want the computer to show and say, and, and send that off as an email message to a uh, uh, have it processed and turned into a presentation. Uh, I, I developed that uh, while working with a group of uh, retirees here in Auckland who complained that you know they wanted to have the ability to 
participate, but uh, weren't familiar even with you know how to use PowerPoint. But they did use email, so you, you got to you meet the, the the authors and the students sort of where they're they're ready to uh, engage. I think. So Frank, uh, a pleasure to oh, gee, as soon as I mention his name, he disappears. Hopefully pleasure he to can say come goodbye back. to you. <clears throat> <laughs> Well, you can you can go ahead and tell us a bit more about Wiki to Speech. If I wanted to send an email and have it read to somebody, how would I do that? Uh, the uh, the syntax for it, I should probably email to you. Uh, this summary and has been you, prepared uh, and delivered using uh, these pairs of of lines. That one says, you know, something like uh, words to show, and the other one says words to say, and then hmm. the software will parse that and put the words to show on the slide and then take the words to say and convert them through text-to-speech to the voiceover. So mm. it just sort of gives you that multi-modality. A very simplistic kind of idea, but it's something that for some you know, learners could be very helpful just to be sort of talked through a, a, a concept or a really the idea of the, the system as a whole is to uh, allow uh, collaboratively created scripts that include much more uh, interactivity, where they can ask questions, uh, br you know, branch accordingly, and potentially display uh, any other web content while the voiceover plays. So, uh, if you wanted to have, you know, an explanation of something that you might make a screencast for. Uh, you could use a wiki to speech um, script, which would then actually be opening the, the web pages that it was talking about. So that the, as the user sort of finished with the lesson, so to speak, they would be in their browser already on the page where they would be doing, you know, whatever interaction the page allowed. Uh, so that it would be different mm -hmm. from, you know, that, that image that you get in a screencast and, and uh, I think you've partially answered this already, but uh, in the chat room, Stafford is asking, and Stafford, I think at this point you need to come into the Hangout so you can ask these questions yourself. Uh, but anyway, he's asking, how different is wiki to speech from text-to-speech on Mac? Uh, any just straight text-to-speech where the, the operating system is just effectively being a screen reader uh, means that you aren't able to um, control that flow uh, the way you can with wiki to speech in a sort of a, you know presentation sense if you just follow one of the links to a wiki to speech talk you'll see what I mean uh, it's a series of slides and you can advance through those slides at your own pace he's saying uh, it's more like a hypercard stack yeah, it's a, a lot like a hypercard stack <laughs> that would play. No, there's an old technology. <laughs> yeah, it is, and and uh, you know I think it's probably a very good one for the you know its day. And uh, what you don't see so much in hypercard, I don't think, is this uh, idea of it all being based on a wiki, you know, where it could be collaboratively edited and improved. That's uh, which is again comes back to my question: what what are we going to see in the way of collaboration here uh, in the EduMOOC? Uh, have... So when I'm looking at your week four EduMOOC cast wiki to speech thing, yep. there's no way I can edit that. Uh, there is, certainly is a way you can edit it if you have the link to the original uh... PowerPoint presentation. That itself is not a wiki to speech this is the product uh, but... example that's what wiki to speech creates basically could you do a um, google doc to speech spin-off really any any script any text-based script could be used to create a wiki to speech uh, type of presentation uh, one of my favorites is etherpad to speech and and mm -hmm. I, I literally will do a demo where you open up an etherpad type something on it and I just take that URL and zap it into the phone, and the phone starts speaking the words that have just been typed on the Etherpad without, you know, any kind of say edit save 
kind of cycle that you normally would have on a wiki. Uh, I, I think that's a very powerful idea is that, you know, you could essentially collaboratively, I mean, we could do it right now, uh, op open up an etherpad document and uh, all type something on it and then I could have the phone speak it. Let's do it. I'm going to ietherpad.com and then I'm just going to call it edumook2011 week 5. It says, do you want to create this pad? I'm going to copy that link back over here to you guys. And just to those of us here, there is this other public text chat I'll put the link in our private back channel to that. And in the public chat, I'm going to put the link to the Hangout. Again, everyone's welcome to join in. <laughs> How many access points can Jeff deal with at one time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about the bridging. I don't think we've come near uh, the limits of Jeff's capabilities here. <laughs> Well, it's just it's so hard when you have like, and this is very mooky, really, when you have active conversations in different spaces that aren't connecting, it's just my instinct to try to, to bridge them. Um, speaking of which, Vance, uh, earlier you were attending the opening session for yet another MOOC that seems to be approaching MOOC methods a little bit differently. What is it? What are they doing? Uh, it's ePortfolio COP Communities of Practice MOOC. Okay, what's what's John showing us there? That I've just scanned the the URL as a QR code, which is the uh -huh. second link I sent, mm -hmm. and so that I didn't have to type it into the phone. Mm -hmm. So now okay. I'm going to open it in uh, in Wiki to speech. Yeah. Did, did anybody type anything on the pad yet? Yes, okay, this is Vance, I'll play, he says, okay. Yeah, I did, of course. Yep. That, that's me speaking yeah. it, but I think mm -hmm. I can have the computer speak here. Etherpad to speech. Oops. Wait, no. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought that was a pretty clever rendition. I, <laughs> I, I need some remedial navigation here. Uh, that link that you tossed into the chat here uh, took me to one of these, what are these called? These. That's a QR code. QR code. Something, something that the computer can just read yeah. with its camera. All right, now. Yeah. He what just do I... generated that with the URL. Okay. So and you what... have to you have to go here. You have to go to the Etherpad there. Uh huh. Yeah. He just he just made a QR code out of that URL so he that just he could scan took it that on his, as a dare as far as how many phone. spaces can Jeff handle at once. Okay. Yeah. This is, Jeff's having a slow day here. It's pouring down rain in Korea. It's hot. He's in his basement. and um, <laughs> yeah, No basement anymore. It's, it's a 41st floor, but it's still steamy. Oh, yeah. It's a 40, 41st floor basement, and yeah. you have to carry all your water up on your head. Okay, this is Jeff's. I'll play. Am I the only one playing? Did you hear that? Yeah. All yeah, right, so cool. That was the phone talking. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, nice. so just to yeah. complete my brain circuit, <laughs> you showed the phone this either pad or you showed it the the mark the QR the, code PR code. Okay, the QR code QR code, which was essentially the same thing as my typing in that URL. Okay, but but, but so that's basically all I had to do to get my phone to speak what was being typed here in this Etherpad. Now, what's being typed in the Etherpad is just sort of words, but it could be a whole script. And, and there's a syntax for these scripts, which allows it to uh, open up links, uh, provide voiceovers for other websites, you know, interact with, you know, through, you know, multiple choice, you know, question and answer. There's even a whole facility for ad hoc inputs, which are then parsed. And then the system, uh, uses the, the, the result of that parsing just as you would 
like a Google search. It, it, it attempts to find a place somewhere in the script that is appropriate for to respond to the, the query that's been made. Uh, so it, it's a coming along as a, as a, as a system uh, and has the potential the way uh, you know you know wiki technology links you know between different pages and uh, to to build and you know, just accretively you know in a way that uh, I, I'm trying to, to understand really all the sort of mechanics of, of the the learning process now to, to see all right can we address this uh, the, the, like the, the first of the principles in this, you know, how learning works is what's prior knowledge. You know, what, how, how do we know whether the student is really prepared to deal with the lesson they're about to face? Well, why don't we just kind of ask them some diagnostic kinds of questions and if they don't respond appropriately to those questions, the, the responses to their responses will say, oh, well, you really need to kind of cover this prerequisite material first. Would you like to be directed, you know, would you like to follow this link and, and go and do that? And, and you have, if you had enough of these sort of, you know, modules all you know, tied together, people could figure out what it was that they needed to help with. Uh, and, you know, if they didn't need help, they could just, you know, plunge right on in and, and you know, get into the material that, you know, they most, you know, could benefit from. At least that's that's my thinking about it all, <laughs> but it, it's something that uh, you know I, I I'd like to uh, explore the possibilities uh, uh, of by by putting some of the uh, the elements together and putting it in place. Uh, the question is: So Wiki to Speech could have students respond directly on the wiki with their voices? Uh, that would involve speech recognition, and uh, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago. Uh, speech recognition is a, a possible uh, input to the system, uh, but it's not entirely reliable. Uh, so, um, mm -hmm. if you like, I can I can show you what happened when I tried to use it. Um, I've got a, a YouTube video. Uh, before you do that, a question yep. from Stafford. He got the okay. QR code. How, now, how does he make his phone speak? He makes his phone speak with the Wiki to Speech. Uh, Android app. Unfortunately, I don't have an iPhone version of it yet, so he's got to go to the Android market. I think market. Stafford's Android. Are you Android, Stafford? Yeah. Look look up uh, Wiki to Speech on the Android market, download it, and then punch the QR to Speech button, and then scan that QR code, and it'll start reading what's on that other link, the EduMOOC 2011 Week 5 pad. Hmm. Nice. So it could be any kind of website at all. It could be a, a, a lot of text in there. We'll just start reading it to you. Be kind uh, of an e-reader. Yeah, kind of. Uh, uh, the, uh, the way I've done it for other websites is to say, uh, look for anything that's pre-formatted text. The idea being that you would already have some other site that had, you know, some presentation formatted content to it, but you wanted it to have a voiceover as well. Uh, and you could just put that in a, in a, it'll pre tag someplace, you know, tucked away where it wouldn't distract people from the, the nice presentation version. Uh, or you could just put, you know, uh, scripts in the middle of your blog post or, or anywhere else, uh, essentially marked off in this way. Uh, and with HTML5, there's probably better, you know, I could designate a, a particular, you know, uh, markup that would indicate a wiki to speak. This summary has been prepared. Uh, do, do things a little. Could show a web page, and you could have in the web page some PRE formatted text, which then exactly, the yeah. yeah, people so people can view the web page, and but they'll um, they'll have Here read to the, them what you want read. Yeah, yeah. I got it. Uh -huh. and, and, but you can also make it work so that you, you have a script that is actually calling up other web pages and, and saying the words you want said on those other web pages that, that don't have any voiceover you know, directly on them. 
that which I think is a very nice kind of capability just to be able to talk about what's on the web you know, um, by that... saying, follow this link, and what you're going to hear is, is everything else that's in the script, you know, following the, the point where that link appears. I, I believe Stafford and I are having trouble finding this app on our Korean market. Ah, uh, gee, all right, let's see if I can help. Um, which, you know, Stafford, I also want to thank Stafford. He's the one who figured out or helped me figure out how to get uh, Google Plus on my Android phone because it's not on the market here either. But with the, oh, I forget the extension, there's some kind of file you can download and put it on and, and install on your phone. So maybe that same kind of routine. Uh, more than likely, the reason you can't find it is there's always the question of do you put hyphens in the name or not? I tried both. <laughs> OK. Does that one come up for you? And that uh, instructional design that you just outlined, where this, where you'd make this work, it, it, um, it seems like you're designing an expert system, and it, it's using a lot of elements from programmed instruction, which are, you know, of course, this is a, uh, you know, back in the behaviorist era, it was popular, but now, but I mean, you know, this could actually work in the way, in the sense that you're, I mean, there's nothing wrong with programmed instruction, let's say, but it's just the way it was implemented. But yeah, and I'd like to see it, doing, you know, yeah. implemented in all different kinds of ways, you know, mm -hmm. delivering some kind of constructivist, uh, you know, uh, guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, well, if, if you they, made it discreet enough, you know, it would, it would yeah. be, it would work, you know. Yeah. Just like a, a platonic uh, dialogue, you know. So. Oh, yeah, here's, here's the one. Voice response of open allure. Uh, where I tried to get it. So that's a YouTube video, two minutes long, where I basically talk through uh, interactions with the system. Hmm, okay. Hope this, this is probably going to try and play, but I'll stop it. <clears throat> It's telling me my phone is not compatible with this, I think. Oh, really? At least according to Google Translate. Uh, but it did the same thing with Google+. Plus. What we needed was the, the file. Yeah, it's, it, Stafford's confirming that. It's blocked in Korea. But if we can get the, and tell me what the extension is. That, oh, APK file. If we can get an you APK. You want me just to email you an APK? E uh, uh, or upload it. Just upload it to Dropbox or something. And we'll spread it across the peninsula, the Asian <laughs> invasion. All righty. Hey, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> My son just walked in and started sc scratching the cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um... Jeff was asking me about this other MOOC. Um, there, you know, there's one starting on August the first, and it's going till September 30th, and it's about e-portfolios. Uh, were you aware of it? It's it's in Jeff's list, by the way. Jeff in the Edu MOOC page, Jeff has a nice list of past and future uh, MOOCs, and uh, like the one the Connect MOOC is that it? Um, Anyway, there's one with uh, Siemens and Downs coming up, and uh, this one is uh, ePortfolios, and it has um, Helen Barrett as part of it. Are you familiar with Helen Barrett? Oh, yeah. She's been doing this for years, mm -hmm. portfolios. She's the portfolio expert. Yes, she is, I would say, and, and so there's a chance to interact with her. And um, it, and, and if at this session that they did today, they did it in Illuminate. They were incredibly prepared. You know, they, the slides and the setup they have, they're uh, in, in a way a little bit overly prepared as, as opposed to this one, which works off a of Google website. And it's, you know, I mean, John is asking, well, what's going to come out of it? I don't know. Whatever, you know, whatever we do <laughs> comes out of it. But I think that one, the, the, this one looks like it's going to be a little bit more. Well, for, for one thing, it's got some students. So uh, I think, and it, it's, it's, they were asking the people there, why are you here? Are you interested in ePortfolios? Are you here because you're going to do a, 
um, continuing education thing, or do you, are you going to looking for a certificate from it? You know, so, so they've got people in the Australian environment who are. Or are you just one of these MOOC uh, heads? I feel like we're the modern deadheads. We yeah, just go from MOOC to MOOC. MOOC heads. That's the next one after webheads, but the next one is mookheads. Yeah, <laughs> mookheads. There we go, <laughs> mookheads. <laughs> you know that's how webheads got its name. Dave Wynette, who was in the last hangout, just mentioned to me as I was chatting with him. I was in Abu Dhabi, and I'd, I'd been working with him in California online, and he uh, and we were just talking about uh, you know some of the next horizons uh, for our uh, informal learning. Uh, endeavors, and he said that we're just a bunch of webheads, and I I picked that name up and I turned it into this uh, COP. But I've always given him credit for it. So if you see him, but I'm sure that I'm sure what, what Jeff is doing with his fingers right there is he's surely taking out a uh, a domain mookheads right now as we speak, <laughs> <laughs> or it could be mook bridges. He's probably getting them both. <laughs> mook bridges. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm surprised we haven't seen that one come up. Um, yeah, I was listening to that intro session with, with one ear as I was doing some other stuff, and it was strikingly different from the Edu MOOC in terms of its level of uh, uh, preparation and engagement and structure. And also the thing that struck me is that this is kind of an existing community. They've been having these regular Illuminate sessions all about this, so they kind of start with the foundation of a community that's used to interacting online and producing some content. So really they're just kind of bringing, they're opening it up but there's already an it to open and carry some momentum into the MOOC. Yeah, it was, I found out about this at a previous event that they had, and Coach Carol, Carol McCullough, um, has um, mentioned that she, they, they were just doing this by constantly having events. And, um, you know, just to keep everybody alive, you know, keep everybody working. Um, so I guess, like you said, yeah, this is just one of the, one more in that in that stream of events. Hello, Rebecca. We see you. We're not hearing you yet. Oh, there. How about that? We got gotcha. you. <laughs> Excellent. Hello. Yeah, that's great. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. What brings you to this moot cast? <laughs> Um, I just I just saw you on uh, I saw the Twitter. I'm like, oh, I figure I'll join these guys and say hi. I only have a few minutes, but hey, why not? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, what got your attention these days? <laughs> well, this week has been um, I'm doing lots of reading about complexity theory and associating that with the whole MOOC design thing. So, kind of interesting. <laughs> complexity theory. What, what sort That's of URLs are you looking at? Your <laughs> <laughs> um. There's actually, um, there was a journal, I'm not aware which one it was, I have to look that one up, um, that just the whole, whole journal was about complexity theory. Where is it? What, what does John just put here in the chat? I'm looking for my mouse. Yeah. That, that's a discussion that Rebecca started that uh, I posted to. Uh, ah, is she the one you were group. talking about before? Oh, yeah, don't Oh, it's don't that Rebecca. Her. <laughs> oh. Jeff, your mic's not muted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you you were the highlight of week five, Rebecca. You were almost the entire week. Week five, uh, the mobile learning week, or the one out <clears throat> that's this week, or week five is this week? I think, we're, I think we're in week five. We just started week five. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm a little bit confused by the timing because they're doing the sync session at the end of the week. So some people are starting their weeks after the sync session, and I start on Mondays. So <laughs> that does cause a bit of confusion. The, the, the point I made in this posting included something about ePortfolios which I think are something of an antidote to your academic transcript, you know, which uh, the institution controls that uh, you develop this, uh, you know, collection of work product that then you can demonstrate your own skill set with. Is that, is that where things are headed? 
I, certainly Athabasca is doing a lot in that area where their students, when they do their, their master's programs, are setting up their own e-portfolios as part of it. What is the other, the e-cup? E how, how are you calling it now? The, the, the other community? Epcot. Yeah. The other MOOC Ep that's coming up. Epcop. 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 Sorry. Oh, I don't know that one. Which is which is that one? Uh, oh, just, we'll find you a URL. Uh, follow <laughs> back in the in the uh, chat there, Rebecca. Uh, I'll toss it in again. Post. And I just want to say hello to the man with the, the sharpest webcam in the land. Love How you doing, guys? Show me. It doesn't show me the chat beyond where I joined. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> How's it going, Sanford? Oh, pretty good. I'm uh, trying to book a flight to Orlando. <laughs> are you, you mean for the? And what are you going there for? Uh, Disney World. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I put in Epcot, and it took me to Epcot. So that would be exactly where you want to go, because this is all this is about. <laughs> <laughs> that just doesn't give me anything for EPCOP. Yeah, they I should have checked their acronyms before oh, they made that one. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. a quick aside, Sorry, John, I want to let you know uh, Stafford has got your app. It is now awesome. in Korea and it will start spreading. <laughs> well, I've got a guy here in Auckland who wants to do some Korean uh, wiki to speech stuff. Uh, so I, I've been working with him on uh, the Unicode and all of that, and, and there certainly are plenty of different languages uh, in the in the library of the phones these days. Maybe I can give you a quick demonstration of that. Hello, Scott Lowe. <sighs> Friendly greetings. Hello. <laughs> this is a big hangout. Hello. Yes, this is Scott, long-time oh, webcaster, podcaster, first-time mookhead, I think. <laughs> uh, Stafford is asking about you hitting up Google for some seed money for your app, John. <laughs> I think it would be great. I, uh, um, I had a chance to actually meet uh, uh, Larry Page last summer, and... Uh, I didn't get him to take a look at my app, unfortunately. How did you happen to meet him? Uh, he came over to Singularity University. Oh. Uh, since they they were a sponsor. Uh. You're hearing some Chinese. I am. Yes. Yeah, that, yes. That, that's my phone talking Chinese. What a smartphone. Yeah. Hey, you could call it a smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rebecca, have we finished uh, your thoughts on complexity theory as it relates to MOOCs? Um, I'm still trying to figure out sort of the, the, um, the whole how they relate. So that should be a, an interesting investigation of the week. Did you see my piece on Stigmergy? No. <laughs> You're just making up words now, John. It's related. It's related. <laughs> this is really a good word. It's a it's a word from from the biological uh, lexicon that that means uh, uh, biological agents leaving signals in their work or their travels. That others then follow and build upon. It's it's the way ant trails work. You know, they go and leave little, uh, you know, pheromone um, crumbs. Crumbs, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and Thank and you. that's in a big, in a sense, what what edu mooc and, and and all of these you know plus one things are all about. It's it's all of us kind of going off, discovering things, and kind of coming back and telling the rest of the the hive. You know, hey, this is something good off over in this direction. So, so let's go exploit that. And uh, I, uh, you know, link it in to uh, things like this uh, the Stack Overflow site that I keep going on about. That uh, in the in the the world of, of uh, you know computer geeks, we've got so many unanswered questions that that we really need to turn to one another for help 
on a regular basis. You know, uh, IRC is a is a long standing you know uh, communication mode for for developers, but to to keep track of some of the the you know more persistent questions, they've they've created these these sites where questions get posted, answers get posted to the questions, and then everybody who comes along votes about which are the good questions and which are the good answers. It's a, it's a stigma G in action. Speaking of good questions, Rebecca, what's your question here? Oh, um, so I have a, a, a thought as to when I look at the MOOCs, um, or at least my experience so far, um, and I'm looking at the research and the articles that are posted in academia because that's the world I'm working in at the moment. Um, one of the things I'm finding is that although MOOCs talk about the community as a way to generate knowledge, it's all about the individual knowledge that's gained. So it's very seems to be very individualistically focused. Like it's like what I gain because I'm part of the MOOC, um, and I see a lot of. Um, reflective stuff going on, but not necessarily so much dialogue going on. And so I'm wondering, can this format work to actually create new knowledge outside of, so that the theory of the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, right? So let's, can we actually create this new knowledge using the MOOC format? I think I might have a thesis uh in that. <laughs> yeah, I would say yes, because we've learned so much about learning and how courses can be constructed, you know, through uh, experimenting with MOOCs. At least I have, I feel. I mean, that's that's my knowledge, you know, but as far as, uh, I think I think I'm getting this from other people who are involved in the MOOCs and therefore they must be learning too. I mean, I can't really speak to the other people except that I listened to Dave Cormier talk about how MOOC has uh, altered his learning and he's able to articulate what he tries to do with students in ways that he would not have been able to articulate had he not participated in a MOOC. And uh, so I think that's that's evidence of uh, new knowledge being created. You're saying Dave Cormier is, is evidence of that? I'm saying that the way he, the way he articulates, when I hear him talk uh, about what he's doing in his own classes and his theories about uh, when he tries to defend why he uh, opens up courses, for example, to, um, uh, you know, as opposed, when he argues, for example, that we sh that his courses should be open or that mm -hmm. students should create in open spaces rather than hide behind walled gardens, for example. When he argues a point like that, he uses a lot of MOOC theory to that he wouldn't have had he not... Um, participated in, in a MOOC in, in open spaces on the scale that we do. All right, I like that. So so we're talking about like in Blackboard or out of Blackboard. But I guess my, my thing here is it's still very individual focused of where the learning is. So it doesn't have the learning. Um, again, this comes back into the complexity and even some of the, the connectivist is that the knowledge is actually that knowledge is actually not something that exists inside a person, but something that exists outside. And I don't see the knowledge being created outside. I don't see a product coming out of a MOOC that looks like it's changed, like the, the MOOC itself is the knowledge as opposed to the individuals that are participating in it. Okay, Rebecca, you said where the learning is occurring, I think, in a face-to-face -face course, can we identify where the learning is occurring? Or are you saying that it's it's in the products that people create in courses that is the learning? I don't think, can you still hear me? I just changed my microphone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that it's, it's, I don't think that, like, I still think the learning still happens individually, but I think that the goal, or some of the lofty goals of connectivism um, have to do with the greater network knowledge, and I don't know that we've necessarily achieved that with the current design of MOOCs, although I'm very curious to see how Change MOOC is going to come about. How might you design a MOOC to better facilitate that? 
Um, that's what I'm thinking about, and I'm, I'm, yeah, that's what I'm considering. And and really, it's that balance between I think structure and openness. Um, and that's where I'm, I'm really curious. I've only done the two MOOCs so far: the Moby MOOC and then um, Edge MOOC. And I'm under impressed with Edge MOOC. Um, but so I'm curious to see what um, what what change MOOC will be. Although this other one that just popped up, uh, Epcop, Epcop, Epcop. <laughs> ePortfolios, <laughs> ePortfolios. But I need to take a look at yeah. it more. I, I think personally, um, I put a lot of energy into creating blogs and create and, and going through these topics. I really like to see that the organizers put a little bit more energy into telling me what they were thinking when they picked the titles um, and and doing a little bit of curation because otherwise it's like like in edge of they don't they didn't do any real curation right every single one of them has the same basic journals posted to it and one sentence doesn't really qualify enough that's my perspective anyways I think that it could have been more focused Hmm. How does one curate a MOOC? And that, well, that's, aggregate. It's yeah. Sorry. It's not just ag aggregate though. It's before the aggregation because aggregation happens during the MOOC. But before the MOOC, when you're setting it up, in essence, you know, you need to pick the five or six best articles, blog posts, whatever, associated with that topic, so that the people that are in the MOOC have you know are, are starting from the same we're talking about that we're having the same conversation or talking about the same things maybe in different ways but if you don't have that five or six articles to focus things on um, then everybody's going there every which way and it becomes very it very distributed but that's good I see if if you do that like Stephen Downs does in the in the dailies that he puts out then you you're, you're sort of be, becoming the media you know you're directing you're channeling and that's causing everyone to have to come into your mindset whereas if you if you go to the other extreme like in this book then we get together and make meaningful experiences with one another and the people who are running the book can't possibly know what's going on in all the hundreds of different conversations we don't even know that's what you're saying it's so distributed right so that's that's an advantage and a disadvantage but in one way it's very uncontrolling which to me I find but you know I mean me. Rebecca yeah. has done a lot of blogging I just realized that you are rjh dot going east dot ca mm -hmm. and I've you know I've been copying little blog post every week onto my little aggregation site and you are I think the the leading blogger in this edge MOOC and there yeah. hasn't been much response uh, and that's a little bit demotivating I would think I, I can tell you I'm I, you know I, I admitted it in one of my blog posts I'm highly motivated by the number of people that are actually reading my blog um, or at least hitting it but <laughs> It, it is that that's part of the challenges that I'm having with this particular MOOC is that I'm searching for conversations and I'm not finding them um, and I'm having a hard time getting into like one of the theories behind this is that we should be able to get into a conversation in depth and we haven't been everything has been very superficial that I'm finding whereas if I go back to Moby MOOC which had a little bit more structure and really it wasn't a lot more really it was a few articles and a couple of leading questions it meant that the the mental energy was a little bit more focused. It was still very open, but it was just a little bit more focused, and that little bit more focus meant that we could actually tackle topics at a deeper level. But couldn't you take control of that? As it relates to you, you know, if you want more curation, and you could could you drive it so that some of us would say, "Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's uh, let's pursue this." I mean, you're, you're sort of starting that in your blog, your postings. And... Yeah, I guess I look for the host. Like, if you're going to host a MOOC, I look for the host to do a little bit more work. <laughs> sort of, that's, it's an awful lot of work to do that every week, and I can, I can only participate in so many of them at that level. Um, and that's going to be sort of the challenge, right? It, it's a great idea, but these MOOCs are now starting to pop up everywhere, and I'm like, I love the format. I think it's excellent. 
but I think we could get more out of it if the people that were hosting it weren't just posting sentences or weren't just posting titles, um, but just a little bit more focus. And I also think we'd, re we'd retain more people, like because a lot of people sign up, um, but then a lot of people drop. Don't don't make it past the first two weeks. Well, Rebecca, I hope you keep joining us because you've certainly focused us more this week than in the past. <laughs> So you think this week has been more interesting than just this hour? Yeah, yeah just, just this hour. since you this showed week. up. Yeah. <laughs> did, you see this week versus last week? Because last week I did like mobile learning is my specialty, or at least it was my area of specialization. So I did more on that. Um, but I'm still curious. I find it interesting that the even the posts that get the most hits are still things like the tips for new MOOCs <laughs> or new movers. <laughs> I think, uh, uh, let's see, who was saying, somebody was saying last week, the panel, that it's hard to judge how many people are really participating. Um, but perhaps that's the real challenge of a, a MOOC host, is what do you really use for metrics as you're going along? So I guess that's the challenge for the MOOCsters. I can, uh, Rebecca's asking, do we guys do the panels? I have not made it through. I've listened in quickly to a couple and have not stuck around for any of them. And I mean, as you were talking, what I was thinking, I, to the extent that I did uh, listen in, it seemed like presenting the new topic as much more so than kind of synthesizing any discussion that had taken place. And I think that might help a little bit of getting to where you were talking about. And because of that, you can go and listen to the recording. So you don't really have to, you know, wake yourself up in the middle of the night or whatever. You don't have to be there, you know. And I, I went to the first one, but I was kind of, it didn't seem that interactive. So I, I haven't been back to the other ones. But, you know, I can go and listen to them if I need to or if I want to. Welcome, Maisie. And if Maisie's going to get anything out of this MOOC, it's going to be getting her audio to work in a Hangout. If you're able to chime in, please feel free, Maisie. Uh, where is everybody? Uh, since I'm over here on the left side of the window, I'll start Jeff in Pusan, Korea. Ah, John Graves, Auckland, New Zealand. Okay, I'll go next since I have blank Maisie. No sound? Okay. Um, Rebecca in Ottawa, Canada. And Rob Darrow, Lake Tahoe, California. Uh, Sanford Arbogast, uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, Vance Stevens, Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. Hi, everybody. This is Scott Lockman, Tokyo, Japan. I feel like it's the beginning of the pageant. Okay, now for the talent <laughs> portion. And it's just so cool, the diversity. In this group, it's really amazing, just of places of where everybody's physically, that is really cool. Good, so we'll see you here every week then, right? Is this a regular time occurrence? It is, it's, yeah. It has been, yeah. Okay, cool. When, um, what is the, when did it start <laughs> based on where we are started now? started at 1400 GMT. Is that an hour ago? Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll put that in. I'll add it to my calendar. Which is another thing. I feel that all MOOCs should speak GMT. Uh, I noticed okay. the EPCOP is giving things in Australian time. I feel like we need to standardize global time. What is it? No, well, you mean you know, you can... standard time isn't global? <laughs> <laughs> no, GMT is the lingua franca of time. Everybody should know where they are in GMT. And so that when you give out a time, you give it in GMT, and, and 2,400 people don't have to do a calculation. It's just much more efficient if you give it, if you give a time that everybody can understand. Like, like the one in Ep Epcop was at 8 o'clock Sydney time. So, I mean, I just happened to check, f do the calculation, and figure out when it was two hours before the event. But I could easily have missed it because 8 o'clock sounds like, I mean, it's not, not even 8 o'clock here right now. But s still, you know, I mean, uh, people miss events if you, if you don't do uh, GMT. So. Yeah, I think I think you're you're 
you've got a good point as long as people get that GMT is not also England summertime because that that, that caused confusion with people too because people assume GMT is is British time and it's not in the summer. <laughs> Which is why I say That's... all online events should be in GMT with a global times link. Click here and see what time it is in your local area. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. I, I, I've actually found that to be very helpful. It's a 21st century literacy, people. We are earthlings. <laughs> yes. We need to know what time oh, it is we, wherever. We'll add that to the choir. list for 21st century student learners. The one thing well, we I found that was... just live on GMT. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I found that was interesting, um, like the, and I love this Hangout idea, um, is have you guys ever done Learn Chat? No, no learn chat. chat. No. Learn no, chat. No. Okay, it's um, LRN chat. I'll put it in here. It's a hashtag on on Twitter. Um, we meet on Thursdays. Um, there are two different time zone meeting times, so you can actually Google it to get the web page that tells you when the two times are. Um, and it's a bunch of learning professionals that get together and talk about topics for um, about an hour and a half on Twitter. You know. Um, I, I've participated in a couple of these Twitter chats, and it's a fine idea, but it just drives me nuts a little bit. It's so much work. Like, why can't people just do a hangout and have a conversation? It's just well, see, the hangouts didn't exist when work yeah. when Learn Chat was there. First of first of all, but I actually find it a, a different types of things happen in that medium. I certainly come up with a lot of witty 140 character comments. Yeah, but, but as Stephen that... Downs was mentioning, you also get a lot of, yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Henry... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, actually... okay, well, who are they agreeing with? And it's just a lot of work for me. But yeah. I'm, I'm... I don't like Twitter. Learn chat cards not that, is not bad with the, yeah, I agree without the context. But um, I just, I just wondered if that, type of interaction would be a useful interaction to occur or set up during a MOOC space to allow people, because I can tell you the edgy MOOC chat, or the, the edgy MOOC hashtag in Twitter is pretty dead. I looked at it yesterday and 50% of the retweets were my blog posts, which I'm also very amused that people will tweet about my blog posts without making reference to me. That's kind of amusing. I'll have to watch that more closely. <laughs> well, I, I think, you know, if we're preparing ourselves to teach and be 21st century learners, we have to, you know, take a lot of these suggestions and implement them ourselves, you know. So, I mean, they're all good suggestions. And um, so, for example, if you want to bring Learn Chat into the MOOC, yeah, that's an excellent idea. Why not do it, you know? Or if you, you, you want to get into more depth, let's... Uh, you know, let's let's find ways to do that. You you could come on to learning together if you want, and uh, that's another. Let me just stick the URL. I just copied it here. I think this. No, oh, I don't know. It's not working. Anyway, try it again. There we go. Okay, there's a link for learning together. So that's something we do at noon GMT every. No, sorry, 1300 GMT every Sunday, and then you can Jeff Lebo does these MOOC casts at this time. And he does a lot of other sessions, too. Maybe, Jeff, you could stick your URL in there. So those are all ways to hang out and to, to get together. Um, and you could certainly do something like if you wanted to do a, uh, an in-depth um, discussion on something you on complexity theory or whatever, you'd be more than welcome to mount a session on, uh, on learning together. And just to make my peace with Twitter, uh, that, you know, I, I have trouble with the Twitter conversations, uh, but I love Twitter for webcast announcements uh, because people never, you know, they don't know when something's happening and very few people really plan ahead to participate in an online event. They're either free at that time or they're not. And Twitter's a great way to say, okay, hey, this is happening. If you're paying attention and you're online and available, tune in. And I'm glad we, we uh, were able to bring Rebecca in that way. So thank you, Twitter. <laughs> So we've uh, we've passed the hour mark, uh, and I just have to say, uh, you know, I've been doing the videos with these with Screencast-O-Matic, uh, which has just been 
doing a great job. And it was limited to an hour, but my last one, they let me go beyond an hour. So thank you, Screencast-O-Matic. And thank you, Google. Uh, they've been letting me upload videos longer than an hour to YouTube. So I just want to thank everybody tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Perseverance. We... You've, been, you've been hanging out at least three hours already. Dude. I am a hanging out machine. <laughs> Uh, any any uh, thoughts we want to get in here before we wrap? Scott, what's on next wrapping. week? Is there something coming up that we can all anticipate and prepare for? Yeah, give us some focus, Rebecca. Give us a couple prompt questions. You know, I was just going to ask you guys that. What do you guys want to think? Is next week personal learning plans? Is that is that the topic? I don't remember. Yeah, we uh, never remember from week to week. Yeah, yeah. No, personal I'm online learning right networks. Now. Yep. Well, those personal learning plans, that's exactly what we're talking about right now. You know, I mean, sort of suggesting that the moderators implement a personal a, a learning plan, but that's really our responsibility. We've got to come up with a learning plan, you know, and uh, and, and make this uh, knowledge beyond what we're, what, what uh, you know, is greater than the sum of the parts. I would say this Hangout is my learning plan each week. Yeah, and Rebecca can improve that by egging us into bringing depth into it. For me, the, the concept of the personal online learning networks, it's something that's never been formalized for me before, so that's going to be an interesting exploration for me, is sort of what, it, what, what does this mean and how does this actually translate to um, the K to 12 aspect of things. Just, yeah. So do we have a homework question? I have no idea. I don't know enough, enough about personal learning networks yet. <laughs> How about you, have uh, you guys heard of the term before? Rebecca, are you in K to 12? No, actually I'm not. I'm, I'm, I do adult education, but in order to have a teachable subject as a as a PhD, um, I need to be able to teach in K to twelve. Uh, but I mean, I, I was going to recommend Jeff's community, uh, the World Bridges Network, which uh, has an EdTech Talk channel, and they have some really remarkable K to twelve people discussing, uh, you know, uh, modern liter literacy skills and what they do with students. I really recommend you tuning in if you're interested in hearing educators talk about cutting edge technology in the K to 12 classroom. And there's also the K to 12 conference, K to 12 online conference, which leaves uh, some great um, artifacts online because it's all asynchronous. And actually, a huge and event been... coming up this week the Reform Symposium. Yes, I've uh, I just looked at the schedule, and that's going to be our learning together event next Sunday. We're going to co-opt their their sessions at thirteen hundred GMT. And for those who don't know, this is just this huge online conference, basically, of sessions, lots of online sessions that you can join in. Oh, well. If I'll miss it, I'll be on a boat next Sunday night. But it's a three-day symposium, so it's uh, wow. before the boat you can get on. Now, if you want to see how to deal with time, <laughs> go to the schedule, and they have a, if you go to the schedule, it links to about 20 or 30 different time zones, 24 different time zones. I, you're right, more, a, because there's some like half-hour time zones in there as well. Oh, yeah, no. And, so there's 30 different links, and you can click on the one that you want to get your schedule in your time. Wow. I mean, you know. <laughs> they actually have 30 different. I didn't check, but they got 30 different Google spreadsheets. Of, uh, Scott anyway, Lockton, you've it, been awfully quiet. I miss your voice. It's just it's a waste to have you on here and not hear your voice a little bit. Well, I feel like a sponge, just soaking this in. I'm not very well versed on MOOCs, so I'm happy to learn. I see that George Seaman is on the panel next week. 
Which panel? The um the edgy move. Personal online oh. learning networks panel. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he is giving a discussion. That's right. And and also uh, Richardson, Will Richardson is giving one as well. Uh, we wouldn't want to miss those, either asynchronously or synchronously. I was asking Scott what he's podcasting about these days. Uh, no podcast, just doing some live radio on the DS-106. And... Uh, mostly working, lots of teaching, lots of teaching. So and is Rob, that a, a job on radio? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. No, no, it's just fun. DS-106, uh, speaking of MOOCs, is a um, digital storing class, digital storytelling class. Forgive my drunken sound. I'm not drunk. I've just got the uh, headphones with the latency. So I'm. A, I need to quit talking. I'm getting <laughs> screwed up with this. Is that the right link? Listen. That's it. Yeah. But yeah, they've got a radio station, and uh, it's a lot of fun. A are there other fun. people still actively streaming like you, or are you Mr. DS106 now? No, not. I'm not Mr. DS106. It's slowed down for the summer, I think, but people still do it. Maybe I can do this. Hey, Jeff, did you capture the text box know. with all the links? Uh, well, I've been encouraging people to chat over there, but they keep chatting here. <laughs> I'm going to try to capture both. Um, and, you know, there's you still did no... a good job of that last week, and I'm trying to do it with my computer, and I can't make it work. You, what you have to do is you have to, you know, click and hold and highlight everything and hope no one chats anything before you get to the top. Because if you do, it'll, okay, unselect all. So I've got this copied. Yay! I know the feeling. I've, I used to do that. <laughs> 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 Especially when you can't capture it all and it stops and then you have to get that bit and then go down to where you were before and capture the rest of it. Right. Well, and another way to handle this is to, I've, I've got a few of these links open in some windows. I could just tag them in delicious edumook, and then we could have a, a that's one way to piece together a, a, a list of links anyway, you know, as people just tag in, in delicious or digo. Uh, who, who uses delicious here and who uses digo? Is this a poll? Uh, I'll put up a hand for yeah. Digo. Digo, okay. I'm on delicious Digo. users. Delicious. Digo. I'm delicious. I'm a delicious. I just transferred oh, all my okay. bookmarks to Digo, so I'm in a position I could actually go over to Digo, but I'm kind of by habit still posting in Delicious. I, yeah, I, I know Delicious was going to get shut down, so I jumped into Digo, and then Delicious isn't getting shut down, so I've got stuff in both places and heading back to Delicious. Yeah, I'm so if you if you so I don't do bookmarking. <laughs> I just I uh, search every time I'm looking for something. Really? You don't do bookmarking? Oh. I, I have never it's funny because um I'm completely inept at filing and so it's related to the same thing. If I tried bookmarking, I would just end up with this mess of bookmarks and I just have to search it anyways. No, and no, so no, no, I that's just, your homework. No, no, you need to have bookmarks. You've got to. <laughs> You got to, and you choose. You you can synchronize delicious and Digo, so it really shouldn't matter if you if you do it in Digo or delicious. We could search for Edumook in either place, but it's just a, a good way when you're, um, you know, if if you're in a chat that, that there's a lot of links, just have people bookmark as they go, and then later on we can go back and see the uh, the the set of links just from that session. And I just want to say hello to Clark, who voted for Digo. I was always a delicious guy, but I kind of kept Digo going. When they threatened to, you know, close, I personally moved to Digo. And then when I started using it for classes, um, I really switched to Digo because I really like their community feature. So I can have all the students share the links with the class community. Um, and so they can kind of create their own groups of links, and I can keep uh, bookmarking away and share them with whichever group I want. Why and not? the highlighting feature is pretty cool too. Yeah. And the slideshow feature. 
The slide show feature, what's that? Uh, you make, it's a, it's a slide cast of some kind. You can make a set of links uh, produce a presentation. With voiceover? I don't know. I <laughs> you just heard slideshow. Yeah, you perked right up, didn't you, John? <laughs> I'm sure with Wiki to Speech, I'm sure Wiki to Speech could drive that. There you go. That would be a good application for Wiki to Speech. All mm. right. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I think it is time for me to wrap things up on this end. Um, but thanks once again. Pleasure hanging out, my fellow MOOC heads. See you next yes. week. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, have a great week. Nice to see everybody. Bye. All right. Let's work on that logo for Mookhead. <laughs> There's our homework. Bye.